3D pop-out photo effect in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark previews or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. We're going to start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we want to do is we want to isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. And I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again, click and drag, to pan up, and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just going to make it red just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm going to do now is enable the layer of the snow border. I'm going to click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel, and I'm also going to double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100% and actually now that I'm looking at it at 100% I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Control J, Command J and the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. So I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected I'm going to press Control Alt G, Command, Option, G on the Mac. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just going to make a selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the Quick Selection tool. And I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her as quick as possible. I'm just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. around the snow border. I'm going to select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm going to do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated. So that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Ctrl 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. Then I'm going to click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around our body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go into window, properties. Click on mask edge and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So Keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone, but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair, and hopefully we'll get a better selection. Now, it didn't do that good of a job here, so I'm just going to leave it like this for now, and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm going to press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. White in these areas here. And 
I know I'm still liking some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. Then with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we gotta work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that up from the tutorial and you can see my final result. But for now, we'll just leave it as it is. I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, right click, and choose fit to screen. And what we're gonna work on now is extra elements that are gonna help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're gonna use. We're gonna use this shovel, put snow, so let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock, they're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of the shovel. I'm gonna click on the lasso tool and I'm gonna make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. It's okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace. Or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu. Under contents, choose content aware and press okay. And Photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear. I'm gonna press Ctrl D, Command D in the Mac to deselect. And this is what we're gonna work with. The first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground. So I'm gonna go into the Channels panel, and I'm gonna look for the channel that's got the most content. In this case, the blue channel. I'm gonna click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon, duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. The white is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's some feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to levels to the right, the dark values to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're gonna be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected, anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm gonna left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool. Like black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. away which represent the floor and once again I'm gonna go into image adjustment levels and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid tones a little bit and press OK so this selection looks like it'll work so I'm gonna press Control, command on the Mac click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it go back into the layers panel on the background layer which is the only layer that we have in this document. I'm gonna click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's gonna work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors and I think we're gonna be able to get away with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply click on the layer, select the move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab and then coming down and releasing and there's our file it's a really big layer so we're gonna need to scale it down Control t command t on the mac transform we can't see the corner handles so i'm gonna press Control zero command zero on the mac there's the corner handles 
and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle's not really matching my seam, so I'm going to right click on it and choose flip horizontal. And from here, I can match the seam a little bit better, and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort, just to get a better perspective of the seam that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white and bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black and maybe shape snow a little bit better. Maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the libraries panel and I'm going to open up 